Warner Brothers show first color news reel. Switzerland hosts Winter Olympics. Burma gains independence from Britain. The year is 1948, and this was on offer by Studebaker. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that dives in deep on the lost and forgotten classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that are frankly being forgotten. We dive in deep with specs, history, and talk design of these rolling works of art. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Real quick before diving in with this one, I'm sorry that the posts have kind of sort of been all over the place. I've been on vacation. We were in Panama City for a week. Now we are in Myrtle Beach for a week. If you're local and have a car that you would like featured on the channel, drop me a line in the comment section below, or you can always email me at what it's like at yahoo.com. Just for context, it's Sunday, June 25th at 6.43 p.m. We are going to be here until July 2nd. So if you're in the area and you have a cool classic car that you would like to see featured on the channel, just reach out to me. Anyway, this 1948 Studebaker Champion is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania. Located in between Harrisburg and Philadelphia, they have over... 850 cars for sale for more information pricing and pictures pertaining to this very car be sure to click the link below after the show 1948 studebaker model lineup was broken down into two models the champion and the commander the champion could be considered junior series and the commander senior series the commander rides a longer wheelbase and has a more powerful 94 horsepower flathead six engine the wheelbase is 119 inches it's worth mentioning that studebaker offered the land cruiser which was part of the commander line at this point and rides a longer wheelbase of 123 inches and only comes in one flavor four door Studebaker offered the champion from 1939 to 1942. World War II happened. They brought it back in 46 through 58 in five generations. 1948 falls in the third generation, which had a production run from 1947 to 1952. The champion model replaced the dictator model and the Lark would succeed it in 1959. 1948 Studebaker champion was designed by Raymond Lowy. Yep that Raymond Lowy, and could be had as a four-door sedan, two-door sedan, two-door coupe, two-door convertible. 1948 is more or less a carryover body design that started back in 47. 47, which was a completely new design, making Studebaker one of the first companies to offer a new car design after the war. In other words, Studebaker Champion was all new, whereas a lot of the big three, they just blew off the dust off the dies and used them forever. So like Ford, Ford's new car, Ford didn't make a post-war car until 1949 with the very creative name 1949 Ford. Anyway, with that said, 47 is very similar to 48. So we're going to compare 48 to 46, 46 on top, 48 on the bottom, and just look at how different these cars are. And that's why we do comparisons because some cars, they, they don't change every year. They might change like the grill or where they put some lights, but this is a drastic change. This is more or less to just show the differences between these two. Look at the interior, look at how different these two are. We might as well do it, 47 on top, 48 on the bottom. There are some differences, such as different bumpers, different bumperettes and or overriders. The side trim in the front is different. The 47 has these side markers in the front that the 48 doesn't have. Hood ornaments are different, hood crests are different. Split windshield on the 47 versus a single piece on the 48. Which do you like better in the comment section below, 46, 47, or 48? Moving on to specs. 192 inches long, 69.75 inches wide, 63 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 112 inches. It weighs 2,735 pounds. Price, 
$2,060, which is equivalent to you spending $25,995.92 in the year 2023. Total 1948 Studebaker production was 87,920 units. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer for the champion, 169.6 cubic inch displacement, flathead 6. 2.8 liters. It's good for 80 horsepower, 4,000 RPM, 134 pound-feet of torque at 2,000 RPM. With a bore of 3 inches and a stroke of 4 inches, compression is 6.5 to 1. Features 4 main bearings built of cast iron. When backed with a 3-speed manual transmission, 0 to 60 could be had 19.6 seconds. It's still faster than a Volkswagen Beetle. Theoretical top speed of 78 miles per hour. Average fuel consumption, 15 and a half miles to the gallon. And these are all baseline numbers. It doesn't tell me if the engine broken in or what rear end is in it or any of that, but I'm pretty certain that I've heard people say that they've gotten 20 to 25 miles to the gallon out of their champion. In the comment section below, what was your experience with this car? Let's talk styling. Look at how there's this another bulge on top of the circular part that comes out here for the headlights. Look at how it's different. Parking and or running markers on top of the headlights. Turn signal indicators. So look at all of the different lines going on in the grill section, as well as these. They didn't have to chrome these parts, or I should say this is stainless. They didn't have to put stainless here. They could have just put metal and painted it, but they didn't. Studebaker insignia right there. If you got the champion, this is what you had here. Champion, nice and proud there. That's interesting. This one has one of these marker lights, but doesn't have one on the other side. Center line. Look at this hood ornament. A lot going on with it. There is a nice center line. It almost looks like a ridge. Just look at all of the different lines going on in this hood design. Coming down the side. And how this bulges out and then gets absorbed into the fender flare. This is flared out. Rocker molding. This one has a spotlight. Suicide windshield wipers. Single piece windshield. But also notice it's not straight or flat. It's like... It comes to almost a point here in the center. Rear view side mirror mounted on the door. Just look at how this looks. Nice fender bulge here, gravel guards, this line, gas filler door. <laughs> Check out the trunk compartment. Look at how it's bulged, much like a hood. The lights, they're very Packard-like, these lights. And this is before Packard and Studebaker merged. Studebaker. The window is plexiglass or plastic. Getting inside, but before we do, just look at all the textures on this. This door handle looks like it's stainless. It opens like that. This door is very slender, but it's curved. Look at how it's shaped. It also has a bend in it. Look at the vent window in relation to the window here. You can see it bends. Very basic door panel. This feels like a sheet. Legitly feels like a sheet. 
Down here, some bright work. Armrest door handle to pull the door shut. Window crank for the big window. Operates like this. Look, it's all framed out. Vent windows. Take a look at this interior. Coming down inside the pedal box down here. High beam switch. This one is the starter button, which is on the back side of the clutch. So when you push the clutch down, just push the clutch down, turn the key and start it. Brake, gas pedal. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. There is tons of space between my hand and the bottom of the steering wheel. And the only reason I show this is because if you don't fit in the car with the steering wheel in your crotch, it's not very comfortable to drive. Onto the button switches and knobs. Three pods sit directly in front of the driver. In the first pod, there is oil pressure, coolant temperature, gasoline gauge, amp meter, clock in the center, speedometer with odometer in the center. Then underneath, there is a bunch of switches and or pull out levers, washer, hood release, map light, accessory buttons such as like overdrive, headlights, handbrake, key, starter, choke, radio, climate controls, which are really heat and ventilation controls. Up above, there are sun visors and they're on the bigger side. The rear view mirror is mounted on the dash. Another sun visor. And notice the sun visors almost go the whole width with just maybe a two inch of a gap there. The convertible top release is right here in the center. Ashtray. On to the glove box test. Here's our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. Here is our glove box in question. The glove box. And that's a pretty big glove box, all things considered. Look at that. And that's why I show this because you'll never, you would never know that that massive camera is inside that glove box. And it shuts. I'm not going to shut it because I had a hard time getting it open. I don't want to lose my camera in there. But it does shut and it will latch. Coming to the rear section, getting inside. Just fold the seat forward like that. That is how much space you have to get back there. Here is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a real quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio. That is what visibility looks like out the back. When the convertible top is in use, you still have all that space back there to put stuff. The rear seat profile, it is rather upright. The seat bench does dip down in the back. There is space in between my knee and the seat. Windows go up like this. That's pretty cool. There isn't an armrest, but there is an ashtray, so you can smoke back here. On the positive side, these are kind of cute, and prices aren't crazy expensive. You could get one of these as an entry-level classic car that is outside the Mustang Corvette Camaro variety old tried and true technology and can be fixed on the side of the road. Potentially good gas mileage against it. Old tried and true technology in 20 years time, if not now. And this goes for just about every single classic car. There isn't any guys. I mean, they're very, they're dwindling that can tell you what's wrong with it just by listening to it. I remember going to a shop back in the day, a guy working on a car could tell you what was wrong with it just by the noise it makes. God, I miss those days. We have to get more people in the classic car hobby. Anyway, prices for these have sort of plateaued. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather, two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have 1948 Mercury Convertible for $2,002 or 1948 Studebaker Champion for 
a little bit more, $2,060, or 1948 Dodge for $2,189, the most expensive one out of this bunch. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Moving to the second scenario, would you rather have a 1946 Studebaker Champion or a 1948 Studebaker Champion or a 1953 Studebaker Champion. Going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give the band and the song title correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you would like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook and would like to reach me, send me an email. All of that information will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, toodaloo! Ba ba b double e double r u n ba beer run. Ba 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 b double e double r u n ba beer run. All you need is a five or ten or a key or a car sober driver. B double e double r u n beer run.